John David Washington. Yo, What's brother. What's good? Oh, man. <laughs> Honor to sit down with you. Yeah, Honor's mine, yeah. man. So tell me, how, how, did, uh, how did Black Klansman come your way? Uh, Black Klansman, I got a text message from mm. Spike Lee. Um, now, we don't have each other. Well, I don't have his number. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we, our families know each other. Yeah. But uh, I never committed. A little bit. A little, a little, a little bit. bit. They got a little history. A little history. <laughs> a little there. history. A little history there. And, uh, I, you know, but I never had, any, had or established any kind of um, cell phone communication with him until that point. So this, you know, I get a text saying, yo, Spike, call me. Mm. I'm like, all right, this is probably a prank or something. Mm. But uh, I'm definitely going to investigate. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm going to see. I call him like, hello. He's like, this Spike. I'm like, what, what up, Spike? <laughs> Um, I got this book, the story. Black, first black African, the first African American detective in Colorado Springs infiltrates the Ku Klux Klan. I'm like, what? Hmm. <laughs> this is, I'm thinking, all right, maybe this is Dave Chappelle skit, yeah, you know, yeah, well, yeah, and it's still yeah. Spike, I'm gonna do it. You know, yeah. he said, Jordan Peele gave it to him, I'm gonna send you the book. I was like, cool. I read the book, I was blown away. Hmm. I was blown away that this piece of rich American history is, it fell through the cracks. It's, 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 it's not a well-known story. I called him back and say, oh, this is crazy. This is incredible. He's like, you love it? I love it. Bet, mm. see you this summer. Wow. Yeah. How, how would you describe your process working together? Like, what's he like as a director? And, and you know, how did he impact your performance? I felt um, the most freedom I've ever had. Mm. As in maybe even as a, going back to my athletic days as an athlete or an artist. Mm ever had this legend that trusted me with this material, this very important material, mm. um, this, uh, this piece of history that, that needs to be toned, that, that needs to be shown and displayed correctly. He trusted me with it. So we, we rehearsed, we discussed about two and a half weeks. He wouldn't even let me, even prior to uh, the table read, he wouldn't let me, uh, I tried to get in touch with Ron Starworth, the real mm. Ron Starworth, and he would like not let me talk to him. Mm. He didn't give me the number until the table read. Mm. And uh, you know, he had his reasons and I'm glad that he did it that was way. Was it so you kind of had a moment to really develop your own thoughts and think about them separate from 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 the, the, the real gentleman? I think that's, I think that was, that's what I discovered. Okay. I found myself, all right, I can't go to him. I mean, there's, there's stuff on the internet these days, yeah, <laughs> YouTube yeah, information, course. but then I went, I went deeper. I was, what about me in the 60s and 70s? So I rid myself of all hip hop, R&B, EDM, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, the cranberries as well. Yeah, <laughs> I love yeah, them. Yeah. And I went, you know, I was, I was my healthy diet, steady diets of war, mm. of Slide, Family Stone, mm. you know, Led Zeppelin. This mm. was for three months. Yeah. I would go to bed to Soul Train every night. Yeah. I would watch uh, Superfly weekly. Wow. And I saw what that was doing to my spirit, what that mm. was doing to my psyche, how I was talking, maybe even how I was posturing different. Yeah. And uh, and that was all prior to talking to Ron, you yeah. know. So um, I, I, it was, I've never experienced anything like that. The, the kind of preparation that Spike uh, that Spike introduced me to. And yeah. uh, but uh, it's I, a real it's a real transformation. And before you try to ask me, yeah, questions, that's what I'm saying. Come I on, wanna, man. hold on. <laughs> Come before, on. I, want, I just want to say, you know, how much I appreciate your work because I think it's one thing for people to be exposed to you through Black Klansmen, which is phenomenal work. Thank you. Sir. But I think for me, what put you in perspective, it's just like just where you're at in your career and in this moment right now and where you could go, was seeing Monsters and Men and oh. being able to see those two characters off of each other within, I think I saw them weeks apart. Wow. And for me, I was like, that's the, that's the, and when I look at that part, that's the supporting performance of the year for me, wow, you, you know, sincerely. Wow. And thank so you. to see those two projects off of each other and then that, that put you as a talent in context for me in a different way where I'm really sincerely truly excited to see what happens to your career and how it unfolds you know Thank you. Thank so you, I, I really wish you the best Thank on your journey. How do you propose to make this investigation? Well I've established contact and created some familiarity with the Klansmen over the phone. I'll continue in that role but I'll need another officer, surprise, surprise, a white officer to play me when they meet face to face. That's my point exactly. Tell me how you found, found yeah. Green Book. Uh, Green Please. Book came, uh, it came a few months, a few months after, uh, you know, we finished the Oscar run with Moonlight and, right, right. Um, you know, I was reading, I, I was avoiding reading things. I was like, don't send me nothing unless it's like really good because I don't have time to just read, to, just to read, you right, know, yeah. so, so we could be in agreement that it's not a project for me. I'm like, send me something that you feel like good about. Mm. And so the ones that were coming my way, I would go through them and then Green Book came. Mm. And it just really, um, it really just, the characters really popped off the page. I thought the 
there, there's a chemistry in the writing that was there. Mm -hmm. um, I thought the story was was important, and and the way in which the arc, the, the journey of the two characters was mm -hmm. was amazing to me. It was a, a fairly brother, it's right? A fair, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Peter Fairley. Yeah. But I think what stood out to me most was this opportunity to step in the shoes of, of Don Shirley. Sure. This this man who who who's there's so many stories that haven't been told. Absolutely. And and you yeah. can't tell every everybody's not gonna get a movie, you know? Uh, but what I thought was amazing about Don Shirley was that was an archetype, a person that I had never seen mm. before mm -hmm. on, on screen. On screen. You know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know, there's firsts for so many different characters or archetypes, but him, I hadn't seen him, somebody who was Usually when we go back <clears throat> pre-1975 mm. or pre, especially pre-civil rights, um, that we are so clearly in this place of, of oppression, right? And that exists in the film, mm -hmm. but I think he is the most empowered you could be in that time, where this is a guy who is the boss in that car. Absolutely. And has always, even though they, they've gone below the Mason-Dixon line, there's this sense that besides a couple of situations, mm -hmm. to me, there was, this, there was this sense that I, as Don Shirley, could eject any time I wanted. I didn't mm -hmm. have to be there. Mm -hmm. I didn't need the money. I didn't have to have that experience. When you say, no, I'm sorry, when you say eject, like emotionally meaning, or just from the job? leave, like, I don't, he doesn't have to finish the tour. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, he yeah. didn't even have to go on the tour. Right. He wasn't, usually it's like, I need this guy to do this thing for me so that I could have my freedom right. or so that I could have this, that, and the other. When we go pre-civil rights, gotcha. this guy, what, what his life was like up north in New York City, mm -hmm. the fact that he could tour, he could do the Nina Simone, go to Europe, mm -hmm. make his money, have his career. He could stay up north, you know, but him going down into the south was a choice. And it wasn't, it wasn't about him finishing because, uh, because he needed that money or, or right. whatnot. It was something that he chose to do. He wanted to put himself on the front lines in his own unique way mm -hmm. and allow people to be exposed to the type of man, the type of black man that he was in order to sort of pierce the consciousness so that they couldn't just think of us as sharecroppers only, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and it's, it's subtle work, meaning like his, his task, it's very subtle work, mm -hmm. but, but it, it's the work that he felt that he was most suited to do, and that was just putting, him, putting himself in that situation. So um, I felt like, and then all the complexities of the character, what was going on within him, his own battle with his, not even a battle with his sexuality, but his quietness about that. His, the, the, That's the, what it felt like in the performance, too. You didn't, the you didn't make it a thing. Yeah, it didn't yeah. become a thing. Like, you weren't holding the audience's hand about it. You didn't right. play it, layered, right. you layeredly played it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, brother. Thank and did you, now, what you said, did you mm -hmm. find that just on the, the words on the page? Is that mm -hmm. once you started researching? Is that when you, I mean, your process of getting mm -hmm. in, once you see it on the page, right? Yeah. Wise man told me if it ain't on the page, it ain't on the stage. So yeah. once you saw it yeah. on the page, and then you start, how did you start coming into everything you just said now? You know what's funny? That, as true as that is, I think my experience in this business, if you look at Viola, for instance, mm -hmm. Viola Davis, who is just extraordinary. Yeah. But that is somebody who is who has been like, until what, eight years ago, 10 years ago, maybe, and it's been a quick 10 years since she's really been on a certain platform sure. of the space that she deserves. Sure. I feel like the experience, specifically speaking of actors of, of color, not to just go all into that too, too long, but you are kind of tasked with turning water into wine. Uh huh. And so instead of getting <laughs> right. like, you know, sure, you, no, I got you, right, yeah. You, 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 yeah. you know, then you just get a okay. Here's a few more grapes, right. but you're not necessarily getting a fuller thing. So mm -hmm. you always look at something. Your nature, at least mine, and how I've kind of fought to just get to this place. I've always felt like I had to try to elevate something, even if it didn't need to be. Like I always felt like I had to find something else that is not even on the page. Right. To right. bring to it because I was only going to be in it for three scenes anyway, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, yeah. um, so with this, what I I understood that it existed in a in a broad space. Mm -hmm. Like this is a film that a lot of people could be attracted to, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so sometimes those get dubbed commercial, mm -hmm. 
And so what I wanted to do with this character that existed in a, in a broader space was make sure that he had the complexity, the necessary complexity for him to resonate as being truthful to, uh, you know? And so, mm -hmm. so yes, that was, that, was, that was there on the page. I think the bones of that were there on the page. But upon seeing him speak in, I, had, I got this little documentary called um, Little Bohemia, mm -hmm. where he's in, um, he lived uh, on top of Carnegie Hall along with 69 other artists. Really? Yeah. And Dr. Shirley have, did. Dr. Shirley did. Oh, wow. He lived there for like 50 years. Wow. So there was like 70 artist lofts on top of Carnegie wow. Hall. <laughs> and they were closing it and basically kicking all those people out. And so he appears in that a couple of times. And when I saw him, this one thing gave me a huge clue into him. And we made sure to put it in the script. He's in his 70s, though, in, in doing this um, and, and speaking in the documentary. But um, he's speaking to the documentarian and he says... Um, uh, well, I couldn't, I couldn't do the husband act and the concert pianist act. Yeah, yeah you said that in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. I and so, that, yeah. and what, and we use that as a head fake to sort of show the audience and spoilers and giving stuff away. But it was basically him in his 70s. If he's not, he hasn't openly come out. You know, he didn't, mm. he didn't say why he really got divorced in that, in that way, in his 70s, right. you know? So I'm like, he's private. Mm -hmm. You know, everything for him is, is very private mm -hmm. and very contained, and that's not your business, and this is how I'm going to, you know? And so it, yeah. it gave me a huge... I must say, I mean, when that, scene, when that scene, when the reveal happens, yeah. when you are handcuffed, when yeah. he's handcuffed, yeah. I didn't see that coming, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and then, like, seeing, like, hearing you talk about it, how you talk about layered and, like... Yeah privatized it, it was, um, it was, it was a brilliant choice. Thank you. Definitely. Dear Dolores, D-E-A-R, this is an animal. As I'm writing this letter, I'm eating potato chips and I'm starting to get thirsty. And you know this is pathetic, right? So if, if us, like just as an audience and looking at your work, if page one of your story as an actor for us is, is ballers, Right, we first see you in that. What was what was happening? Where were you at before that? Like, oh. but with with, just what space were you in? Where were you at? Just as a as a person, mm -hmm. like looking at this work. I know you came out of sports and mm -hmm. whatnot, but mm -hmm. just kind of share with us, you know, where you were at before before your career begins to like, you know, you start, you know, hit the track, start running. I was, um, I guess, I was in s spiritual transit. Mm. I was, I was. I was excited about the unknown, mm. but uh, deeply terrified of it as well. Mm. I, I find there was a moment where I tore my Achilles, mm. and I was 29 years old when I tore it. Mm. A 29-year-old running back that really doesn't have a resume, has no film, is not sexy. Mm. You know, it's the, you're not going to get hired, really. Mm. So I basically knew it was over, football-wise. Mm. But here, here comes these feelings of, I don't know, birthright, if you will. I always wanted mm. to be an actor. Mm. And I'm like, this is the space. This is sort of the opportunity while I'm in this insurmountable amount of pain and popping pain Had pills. Had you communicated that to your parents? And uh, I asked because they're both actors. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, like, I don't had, think so. Had you been brave enough to ever say? I don't think so. I don't think so. So when you go when you go to them, and I'm curious as to, like, every we all know your father, you know, personally, my, my, my idol. But I love what too, man. I yeah, love too. <laughs> but what impact what impact has your mom had on your work? Uh, maybe more of an impact, or diff definitely different than my father. Mm. I mean, I'm thinking about Green Book. My mother is a classically trained pianist, taught mm. you know taught lessons at 11 years old in rural North Carolina, dark skinned mm. woman, mm. you know, who um, was worldly early mm. from a small town, you know, and. Um, Seeing her be able to play the numbers that your character that you were playing mm. in the film, she can do that without even reading the, mm. the notes. Wow. I, I thought um, I thought it was like it was like magic to me. I mean, mm. seeing my father do Shakespeare in the park, knowing he didn't talk like that at the house, mm. and spit these words so clearly, you know, this poetry. Um, I fell in love then. Mm. I thought it was just something I've never. I remember what I felt, you know, watching these movies, watching Glory, you know, watching my mother play. I just felt like. Like I was connected to him in such a way, I was able to tap into a percentage of my brain that usually you can't tap into, and that was sort of the vessel to be, or the, the portal mm. to that, um, 
to that feeling is through this this artistry. So, you know, um, my mom said this too before. Just because you're an artist doesn't mean you have to paint. Doesn't mean right. you have to 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 act or direct. You know, mm. you can do it in everyday life. It's grip key grip, foodie. Mm. You know what I mean? A sculptor. Um, but uh, so I found myself as an athlete, really masquerading as an athlete. But I was an artist then. Mm. I just got into character, yeah. and uh, but I was you know so I never told them. I I, I told my mother once uh, I got the opportunity to audition. Mm. She actually took me to my first audition. I was wow. in crutches and wow. a boot on pain pill, so I was very relaxed. Wow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I left it all in the room. Sheila Jaffe, God bless her, casting yeah. that casting agent. She believed in me first. After my first audition, she said, uh, "So you should retire from football." Oh, and, um, that, and then ten auditions later, I got that. Then I, and then I went to HB Studio. So we shot the pilot in 2014 with the great Peter Berg. Mm. Um, and then uh, then I went to New York and I found HB Studios. Rochelle Oliver, who's another mentor of mine, yeah. Stephen Henderson, who directed me in uh, a play called The Dutchman. Okay. And um, oh yeah, you know, and Mary Barack. And Mary Barack, exactly. Yeah. And um, that sort of. That's when the bug really hit. Yeah. So actually, it wasn't even the pilot that I got to shoot with the rock and the bells and whistles and all that. Mm. It was getting into that gym, that mm. HBO gym, and working on the game, discovering what I can do. Yeah. And again, Spike Lee, on another level, taught me that there's other ways to convey truth. There's not one way to mm. do it. There's multiple ways. There's, there's an abstract way of, you know, it's like uh, organized chaos. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I really, it, it, it just... It changed everything, the whole perspective of the, the approach to the craft yeah. for me. You know what I yeah. mean? So um, I got to ask you, yeah. man. Like, I never actually got to congratulate you yeah. on your Academy Award, no, man. Thank you. But, thank you. But uh, congratulations. Thank and you. and what, what that represents. How did you, basic question, how did you feel, man? Like before, yeah. even like, okay, no, actually this. I want to know for yeah. the audience, too, for actors out there. The campaigning, yeah. right, yeah. before and then it happens and then after. Can you take us through that emotionally? You know, I <clears throat> the at that time, I was just I just felt so grateful for for people wanting to have a conversation with me about my work. <laughs> like work, in a work. real way. Yeah, like, like you yeah, know, yeah. it's it's one thing to be in work. a project and you kinda on the wave of that project and people are are, you know, applauding it or watching it, right. whatever. Cause I've been on a couple of things that that resonated, like House of Cards sure. or whatever, but no one's really trying to have a conversation with me about it, right? Mm -hmm. Or knowing like the work that you put in for someone to be like, that's great, mm -hmm. or that sucks. Mm -hmm. Like they mm -hmm. don't, you know, and that's fair. Like mm -hmm. nobody knows that. But just to have conversation after conversation about the the themes in a film mm -hmm. or, or how you make scenes come alive or just the chemistry between actors, um, the, 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 <clears throat> the deeper motivations under, under choices and like where characters come from, right. what resonates with you about that character, mm -hmm. like all those things that, that was having, I started acting in 1993, you know, and so, um, and started working professionally in 2000. I'd never had to got a, had an opportunity to talk about the work and you know and how I approach it, which is fine. But so that was when you say talk about just to to, certain, meaning, to a certain audience in the way and in, in, in even talk about it in in, in terms of press. Press, like, right? Yes. So okay. much of right. our experience, you know, what I found is so there's only so much bandwidth in an interview, right? Mm -hmm. Only so much space. Mm -hmm. Forty percent of my interview is usually around things of like diversity. Right. Okay. Or color, you know, and, and we're in a real time where that's a real conversation and that has a real place. Mm -hmm. So as as a black actor coming into that, who for me is I I don't want to, but I would do this for free. Mm -hmm. Like it really is something that I'm passionate about. So when you it, you kind of get to the questions about the work or the process, mm -hmm. like so far down the line that mm -hmm. you never you almost don't get to exhaust it. And in some way in doing, in terms of like a press conversation, yeah, right? Yeah. Or just having a conversation with an audience or a public. Right. And so Moonlight was the first time that we had these Q and A's right, and right, the way yeah. see people responding to yeah. everyone in the film is black. Yeah. So we talked color and race, but we really got to get down into in the work, yeah. into the process, into how you thought about the mm -hmm. characters and approach it. So then you get to, the audience gets to respect the reproach, the approach of how an artist who happens to be black mm. also takes a script and metabolizes it mm -hmm. and transforms, right? Because we spend so much of our time talking about color that the 
the transformation process of, of actors of color doesn't get recognized, mm. not in a deeper way, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. And when actors who are white are never asked those right, questions, right, right? right? So all they get, they got all this runway right. to talk about the work. Like, what does it feel like to yeah. be a white actor? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. no one asking that, which is whatever, <laughs> yeah. it's what it is. But so for me, that was the first time you're like, yo, Wow, right, you want right. to know how? Actually, right, cool, you <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. that was amazing. And then, and then winning and and all that, whether I had won or not, winning and all that. Come on, man. Know, come, it, on, come on, I mean, because well, yeah. I guess let me just say, because of what it represents, man. Yeah. When you see Mr. Washington hold the yeah. trophy, or when you see you, Cuba, hold the trophy, yeah. it, it, it's. You know, there's pe there's people that look like us in Kansas. There's yeah. people that look like us in Middle Texas yes. that are like saying, "Oh wait, I can do it. Yes, I can do it. Even yes. if it ain't acting, right. I can I can run the plant. Right, I can run. I can be an agent. I can. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just what it represents. Yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. So so you know, I know. <laughs> it's funny. I had this. Um, I had, I, I, there's a makeup artist I work with. I remember I was on Treme and I was doing like a couple of scenes here and there. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was in a place, at least where I was just really hungry to do more. You know and more fulfilling work, you know? Okay, yeah. And I remember she says to me, your name's Debbie Young, and she said to me, she said, Mahershala, you ask God to guide you to your excellence. And, and I've been praying that like almost every, you know, it mm -hmm. always pops up for me. And I felt like that moment right there was, and I think for so many people, whatever your, whatever your path is, whatever your passion is, that like, we all just want to be guided to our excellence, you know, that that right. that place within us. And people label it different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's people who are atheists, there's people who are agnostic or whatever, right. Muslim, Jew, whatever. Right. But I think for me, it was, I just want to be fulfilled. I want to be holistically, but I want to be guided to my excellence. And so I think in that moment, I felt like it was a prayer that got answered. You know, and Holding, that, standing there. Not that I have ever prayed for a trophy okay. in my life. Okay. But but that moment concept. symbolized an answered prayer. Yes. Sir. And that you are on this path yes, to sir. to like you keep working. Yes, like, sir. okay, now keep working. Right. And this is a symbol of that prayer that's right. been answered. Right. Now you keep working towards your excellence and what that means for people who that resonates with, who may look like me or feel like me, mm -hmm. or my work resonate with, like, oh, yeah, I got to, like, all my folks back in Hayward, California, and mm -hmm. Oakland, and mm -hmm. the Bay Area, right. I know that that's a thing for them. They're like, oh, Hirsch, they Hirsch see, is that's up what I'm there, describing. you know? Yeah, man. Yeah. So that, that, that's great. that, that means, means a lot yeah. Man, yeah. Man, to me, so. How is that? Salty. Have you ever considered becoming a food critic? Not really. Why, is your money in it? I'm just saying you have a marvelous way with words when describing food. Let me ask you, okay. let me ask you, <laughs> okay. let me ask you. So in, in, Spike is interesting, man, because one, you know, he's on the, at least my Mount Rushmore, for sure. Yeah, mine of, too. Of, and, and what's so amazing about him is that the, the multifaceted thing, the multi-pronged director, writer, mm -hmm. actor, always appearing in things. Mm -hmm. What, his own he's got his own, <laughs> he really is a genre, mm. like in a real way. Mm. And so, you know, like if somebody were to do, you know, a Woody Allen movie, you know what that mm -hmm. is in a certain way. Mm -hmm. uh, Scorsese, Spike Lee is his own genre, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and he has this little quirky space that he lives in. How was that stepping into that? And did you understand that? How, when, did it, when did it click? Because you got it, mm -hmm. you nailed it. You're mm -hmm. working with Adam Driver. Mm -hmm some other terrific actors, yeah. what was that like and what was it like existing in a Spike Lee space? Um, you know, I, I've been, <clears throat> been saying it before, I think Spike Lee is a master of cinematic tone. Mm. He under, I think he really understands how to display real life, mm. finding the you know, humor and tragedy mm. and finding the most darkest, harshest moments kind of funny, you know yeah. what I mean? So um, did that, was that ever, did it ever feel like borderline inappropriate to you? Did you ever feel like, ooh, can mm -hmm. we do that? Mm -hmm. Never. Never? I, and All I right. couldn't do this role for anybody else. Right, right. You know, because I know, I know he's in his fourth decade. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and his Mount, like you said, he's on my Mount Rushmore as well, knowing this is right up his alley. Yeah. I didn't feel 
we like Adam and I, we weren't playing for jokes, yeah. you know? And again, I was talking about the feeling of an artist, such a freeing feeling with him directing me. It was so liberating because there were like no notes. There wasn't any line readings. There wasn't mm. any, can you, can you be funnier? Can you mm. be, you know, they say bigger, but that means blacker, I think. Mm. A lot of times yeah. that translates. Yeah. None of that. It mm. was, he'd strip stuff down, but he, and he understands momentum too. When uh, you do all the preparation, you know, you study, you, you, you go to bed with it, you wake up with it, or some don't. Yeah. Um, but he understands in this moment right now, something changed. Yeah. When we're set up and we're going, something changed. So we're mm. gonna go with what's, what that change is because it might be more truer. You know, Stephen Henderson told me, don't get it right, get it true. Yeah. So that kind of takes the pressure off of nailing the target, yes. trying to be accurate in my performance. Yeah. You know, make it, make it more, Where's that? Because I think that takes away from the soul, and I think he's all about that. He has this way of, you know, this sort of abstract ability to to convey a truth that you didn't even realize was there until maybe the second take. And sometimes it's only the second take that you'll get. Mm. Then we're moving on. He has such mm. a pace about his work. Everybody seems to be on board. Again, Finland, he, he loves sports. It felt like a team concept. Everybody mm. wanted to service the film. That was all foreign to mm. me, man. Um, and that, and in it's in its completion, you know, as far as from catering to to uh, hair and makeup, you know yeah. what I mean? I, I, that was, so I'm almost spoiled in a way yeah. because I want to work like that all the time yeah. Yeah. where there's no egos. Right, yes. Can we, that can yeah. happen? Yeah. Uh, what? Yeah. Like, and look what happens <clears throat> when there's no egos, when we're just here for the film, here for the story. Yeah. Um, I, I just find it, I found it, it was tremendous, man. And this voice, let me ask, the voice and speech choice, mm. Where, wh wh <laughs> when'd you lock in on that? And like, why was, was what's the real gentleman's name? Oh, Ron Stalwart. Yeah, so yeah. was, is, is that, did had you met with him and go, oh, I'm going in that direction with it? I was, so I, w I was. Cause it worked really well. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, I was, you know, I, I, online, cause he wouldn't, Spike wouldn't give me his number or email mm. or nothing. So mm. I was going off of some interviews I saw online. And then when I got to finally talk to him, but Spike, he kept telling me, Ron Stalwart is not the Bible. Mm. Ron Star Wars is not the Bible. So mm. what was happening, it just worked out organically. I was totally locked into the voice. Okay. And then I sort of, like a week before we started shooting, I was like, I just let it go. I'm not gonna, I was like obsessing with it, then I just stopped. Mm. I said, F it. Mm. All right, I'm listening to what Spike's saying, listen to what God is saying. Mm. Go with it, trust that it's in there. Mm. Um, so it was, I, th there was some specifics like the, the, if the inflection on the white thing. Mm. White, <laughs> the word white. Actually, I gotta be honest too, my mom's here too. She says it like that yes. too, sometimes yes. white. So yes. I have fun with that part. But yes. um, but yeah, it was, I just wanted to be true to to the guy. You yeah. know, this is, and, and he didn't, and I, and I get a little squeam, squeamish sometimes when, you, when we talk about code switching mm. and mm -hmm. like, I, you know, I went to a private school, mm. but I also grew up in North Carolina. I got yeah. a lot of time there. I was able to go to Europe and, and Italy, you mm. know, every summer. So what am I supposed to sound like? Right. You know what I mean? Right. What, what, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I got all these experiences. And uh, thinking about mm -hmm. the character too with, with, with Doctor, like he kind of said the same thing in the, yeah. in the, you know, in the rain scene. Like, I'm like, I'm not black enough. I'm not, not white enough, like, not man enough. Where you fit. Yeah, you where know? do you fit? And, and that other <laughs> layer of the sexuality too, yeah, like that, yeah. all of that's there. And why are you acting like you ain't got skin in the game, brother? Rookie, that's my fucking business. It's our business. I'm going to get you your membership card so you can go to the cross burning and get in oh, deeper okay. with these guys. And I, I would ask you the same question yeah. Yeah, about your your your, your speech because yeah. I mean Juan, yeah. I said Juan, yeah. Yeah. Juan yeah. had yeah. a different swag, different yeah. everything, posture, yeah. everything was yeah. different. I mean, are those choices on the day, or do you kind of no, get? No, it was Juan was really conscious. I started sort of meditating on. So I get to a place and I usually walk. I walk it for a little while. Yeah, so okay. When I get, and I was like, you literally thinking, like hiking? Yeah, okay. like just like be in the space, get there and. And I was thinking about Miami and right. the heat and these brothers being out on the street oh, right, and what yeah. that'll do to your body and like just letting things go and relax a bit. And so yeah. he kind of lumbers. He's wearing some, 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 you know, high top Nikes, some dunks or whatever. Right. Had the and the white jeans on. Yeah, they're <laughs> unlaced. And so you're going to drag your feet a little bit. He lumbers, uh -huh, you know. Uh -huh, and then uh -huh. with Doc Shirley, I thought of him as a dancer. You okay. know, and so okay. you see a dancer on the subway or on the street, you go, that's a dancer. I see that's a ballerina or that's, and so I thought of him that's as good. being, being like a fencer, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. so everything being like really precise. precise. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. for instance, with True Detective, um, this guy has a broadsword, mm -hmm. so it's just, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. so how all that informs speech, 
you know, um, thinking about sometime my speech, at least with Don Shirley, I felt like as soon as I got more articulate and I brought it, uh, it like it made my whole body do it. Yeah. It uh -huh. brought my whole body uh -huh. in a different place as well. And so thinking about the dancer, thinking about him being very conscious and precise on the keys. Mm. So that means he would be that way with his language, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then also mm -hmm. seeing him speak, mm -hmm. it all made sense to me. So I was just trying to keep all those balls in the air, right on. you know? And so yeah. I did hire someone and I worked with, oh, okay. I worked with a, a, a woman by the name of Denise Woods, a voice and speech coach. And, right on. and yeah, and so I, 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 I do think about all those things. And what I love about acting is that I absolutely get on my wife's nerves because I'm, I'm real nitpicky, <coughs> I don't, but I don't mean to be. Yeah, you know, I really don't, but like, I'm like, oh, that thing goes there actually, you know? Right, yeah, yeah, and yeah. so, yeah. Acting is like the perfect place for my nature, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to to like pick at things mm -hmm. and and find its place, or just to to be free and let it go mm -hmm. and allow those ideas to to juggle sure, those things. Sure. It, it like I feel exhausted by the time I'm done working, right, and yeah. I kind of need to exhaust my mind in that way because it's the only place that makes the that place makes the most sense for me, just in my my existence and how I just Absolutely. like approach. I feel you. I mean, like, I, I yeah. honestly feel it's therapy for me. Mm. You know, I, I, I was action packed with issues growing up, mm. you know, and, and this sort of, again, football served as this sort of source of independence, yeah. you know what I mean? But I realized I can put all that stuff, all the stuff I learned, what I was feeling into these characters. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I, I mean, there's a, there's a hierarchy. I put, I give it to God first, yeah. Yeah. but, um, but then I'm able to, he's, you know, I, 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 my prayer, one of my prayers always is just use me, God. Mm. I'm a vessel. Mm. Just talk through me. I'm not, I'm just here to service this, yeah. whatever it is. And, uh, and my goodness, it's so much fun too. Yeah. Man. It's fun yeah. to be able to, to work out, you know, Ricky Jarrett's, you know, action pack uh, yeah. issue history of father stuff or whatever, just to, to, to throw it in, just, just to be in these clothes. It's yeah. something about Miami too. I love Miami, by the way. Yeah. I love filming there, the people, the food, the culture, all that. Yeah. So uh, that was fun. Um, let, let me ask, because you, you, you brought it up, and I, of course I brought it up. I'm just curious, uh, this is a conversation I've never had with another actor. Um, what, what, what place does like you know? I know your grandfather was a, was a preacher, correct? Yeah. My grandmother was a preacher. My mom's an ordained minister. Right? Uh -huh. What place does does like your your religious spiritual consciousness? What, how does that inform your work in terms of like perhaps boundaries mm -hmm. or or just um, the energy behind accomplishing? beginning, middle, end, like finishing a day, finishing a, a shoot, finishing a job, like how does, did, how does it impact, impact your acting? That's a good question. Really good question. If you're aware of it, if you're not aware, you might not be at the place where you like sit up there and like have necessarily thought of it like that because it could just, I know it can also just be something that is just, you've always known, sort of affects your every day. But I'm just curious, do you, do you feel like your, your sort of spiritual consciousness in some ways dictates that you draw lines for yourself um it's it, it's such a and I'm, I'm still yeah I, I don't have a definitive answer for that I'm mm. still sort of in I'm sort of buffering if mm -hmm. you will mm -hmm. <laughs> right now with um yeah I mean it definitely I mean it directly impacts yeah. basically everything I do yeah. you know especially this arts and crafts yeah. you know what I mean that being said when I think about boundaries I, I feel like that's putting you know, I'm bounding him as well, mm. bounding God mm. like that. So uh, it should, if he's, li if possibilities are limitless, mm. so should be the explorative freedoms of creativity. Mm. Okay. So, so, um, you know, it, it's it, well, what? Okay, this is a better way. I think what I meant by that is, is there a character that, just because you're conscious in a certain space, was there somewhere you could read and be like, uh, I can't really justify playing that person. You know, even if it's not about playing the good guy or playing oh, no, the bad right. guy, sure, sure. but like I can't do the math on how this person is the way they are, and so therefore it just feels like, you know, uh, unnecessary mm -hmm. or that something is being <clears throat> exploited there, or it feels egregious, or like something mm -hmm. about it that this would. Have you ever read anything where you said, ah, just mm -hmm. considering who I am, this is not, this doesn't work for me? Uh, I, I have, but mm -hmm. I've also read uh, some characters that are, are so. 
uh, so absurd. Well, so absurd yeah. in, in so many ways, but I'm thinking about the whole overall point of this. What are we saying, though? Mm. And if it services the message, again, going going to films, watching films as a kid, mm. I experienced, I wanted to cry, I wanted to laugh, I wanted to enjoy myself. I also wanted to be sometimes in an entertainment, entertaining way taught a lesson. Mm. So if this is an opportunity for those kids in Texas or the kid in Maine that looks like us, mm. overall, our mm. overarching theme of the film, this is why you shouldn't make these decisions. Mm. I'll service that. Mm. I'll be again, but that's like it's bigger than me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'll yeah. service that. So I'll I'll be the buffoon or this yeah. absurd uh, absurd uh, fellow if it means you'll get what, why he did the stuff and what happens to him. Right. So uh, so then again, that kind of breaks the chains of uh, what I won't do right. and right. and all that because it's about who I get to work with. And that's why I'm in mm. my life right now anyway. Like just being a like, true detective I mean, coming into a franchise like yeah. that. That's the kind of opportunity. I wanted yeah. to ask you this too though. Yes. After winning, mm. right? And what I was saying before, like how important it is to the community of uh, our actors yes. and just overall, does that change your taste? Mm. Does that, does, are you more selective now? Are you, mm. are you less selective now? Yeah. Like how, how does that inform you going, moving forward? Well, I, it, I, after I won, I was still just as hungry though. Yeah. Cause yeah, I, and sure. what I mean is by that is Moonlight, I, I'm in it for 30 minutes, 25 minutes, you know? Um, Green Book is, is the most present I've ever been in the story. Mm. So mm. I'm 44. I've been working. Oh, almost, when you say present, like just screen meaning, time. Cause screen time. Cause, no, screen so, time, right, but also dimensionality, though. Okay, right. Like having a character that really has dimension and you're not, your backstory is in the movie. Yes, in, you know right, what I mean? That, Opposed I to okay, like, okay. what's my backstory? Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, right, like, yeah. you're in there for two scenes, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. um, so I just want to make that clear. Yeah, cause yeah, like, no, you, thank you. Yeah, thank so, you, right. thank <laughs> you, thank you. So for me, going into like finishing this Oscar season or a couple years ago, I was like, do I finally get to get a lead shot? Mm -hmm. You okay, know, yeah. like, and so. So you are human. <laughs> yeah, okay. heck yeah. Just, because right. I, would, I didn't feel fulfilled. Sure. Grateful, there's a difference between gratitude and fulfillment. Okay. Grateful for the work, but not fulfilled by it. Right. Just, I went home like wanting to work some right. more. I yeah. wasn't tired when I went home, right. you know? Yeah, yeah. And so, so Green Book and True Detective happened within days of each other in terms of booking them. Wow. And I shot them. I finished Green Book and a week later started True Detective. Wow. And so when That's you talk amazing. about like where I was at like after the Oscar, I was approached for originally um, True Detective was, was, it was written different. Mm -hmm. And so the lead was white mm -hmm. and the, the other cop was black. And uh, the, the, and if you, once you see the show, you'll see that there's, there's a, it's different from the other seasons okay. in that like the lead character Wayne you know, it really, he's, he's at the point of the arrowhead, okay. you know? Okay. And, and so I came, after, came out of all that and I'm going, and I read, I read the scripts, I was blown away, I got to read the first four, and, and I could have played that, that second, uh, the second lead, mm -hmm. the supporting character, but in my mind I was like, I've done this my entire career though. I've never done that, and I'm, 40 at that time, 43 years old, you know? And if it don't happen now, it really may not happen. Mm. So my grandfather was a state police officer and these are two state police officers. So I went on my phone, I'm hitting up some cousins and whatnot mm -hmm. and uh, they sent me some pictures of my grandfather in a state police officer uniform. Mm -hmm. So I text them to Nick, Nick Pizzolatto, mm -hmm. the showrunner, and I was like, See, we existed in this space in the 60s, in the 70s, you know, state police officer. <laughs> and this is in Arkansas. And Just in case but this you is know. like, yeah, my grandfather's from Kentucky. And I was like, you know, I think your story would be served. I think the story would improve in this case if this lead character is black, taking the, looking at a, 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 this crime working to be solved in 1980. Like, what is that mm. in 1980 in Fayetteville, Arkansas, and this lead detective is black, and, and it's, it's a, a black guy and a white guy, you're asking someone questions, and he's the lead detective. If you're white, then they may not look at me when I ask them a, when I ask them a question. They're, like, addressing him, but I'm the lead right. cop. Right. So, like, right. this, I'm like, this is how you but can the address... the law's on your side. <laughs> this is how you can address 
those things that don't, yeah. we don't have to beat him over the head with the race element, sure. but let's write it. I'm encouraging him to like think of it from the standpoint of how it's experienced. Mm -hmm. Racism is not experienced as like the N word mm -hmm. all the time, mm -hmm. right? It's yeah. more like, yo, he wouldn't even look me in the mm -hmm. eye. Mm -hmm. Or like I said, thank you, mm -hmm. he just brushed me off. Like, you know, yeah. that's, and a, a so. Sort of normalizing behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so once I, I came back to him and I was like, I wanna play that part. And he thought about it, a couple of days, got back to me and he was like, yo, let's do this. Wow. Like, I'm, I'm down. Wow. He went back, we wrote his whole thing. Wow. And, and like, wow. he brought, you know, how, who, who, do you, who else do you like? And I was like, yo, Carmen is dope. Yeah, so yeah, he yeah. got Carmen to Jogo and then we got, you know, Steven came on and, and, and you know, we, we put it together. But, um, I love so story, that's though. what I wanted to do. I wanted to, I want to finally, I want to finally like, like get into it, you know, and finally get to get to carry that. Yeah.